This is my mate Mike. Hello. For around two years, Mike has been talking about getting a saltwater tank, but he's sticking with his freshwater tank because he's worried it'll be too difficult and too expensive to go marine. So today I'm going to show Mike and you just how easy and cheap it is to set up a saltwater aquarium. Now this is not a sponsored video and I bought everything with my own money, so with that being said, let's get stuck in. The tank I've chosen is a Fluval Evo 13.5. It's a stylish little tank, so it'll look good in any room you set it up in. It's also small, which makes it easy to maintain, yet it's still big enough to afford you a decent selection of easy to keep livestock options in terms of both fish and corals. And crucially, it's really simple, and there's nothing intimidating like a sump or a skimmer to get your head round. It comes with all the equipment you need to get started, and it costs just £140 in the UK, or around $180 in the US. First up then, we'll need to choose a location for the tank. You'll enjoy it more and neglect it less if you put it somewhere you'll see it all the time. And the Evo is just under two feet long and one foot wide, so it'll fit more or less anywhere you want. A kitchen worktop or side cabinet make ideal locations, and mine will live in my home office to keep me nice and zen when video meetings are driving me crazy. You'll need to make sure the surface is level to avoid unnecessary pressure on the glass joints. And these furniture shims will get you most of the way, but for good measure, I'm using a cut to size aquarium leveling mat that will even off the last millimeter or so of angle. And because the tank has a small overhang, you won't notice the excess edges of the leveling mat around the base. Next up, you'll need to add your rockscape. It's best to use marine specific rock and not freshwater rock or ornaments. The rock in a saltwater tank acts as filtration and anything else will be less effective and may even leach nasties into your water that your corals won't like. You can buy man-made rock that's safe for saltwater tanks for less than 50 pounds. This lovely looking purple stuff is called real reef rock and you should buy enough pieces to fill around a third to a half of the tank. You don't need to be particularly creative, just use a couple of pieces that have gentle angles for easy coral placement, and ideally a few holes or caves for your fish to hide in at night. Or you can do what I did and cheat. I commissioned this from a company called RR Aquascapes in the UK. It was quite expensive at £100, but it will create a really nice look in the tank, has great angles and ledges for easy coral placement, and plenty of hiding places to help keep my fish relaxed. And now we're ready to add salt water. The easiest way to do this is to buy the stuff pre-mixed from your local fish shop. I bought these two 25 litre barrels of salt water for £15, which is plenty because Fluval lied and the tank actually only holds 40 litres, not 52. There's no magic to adding the salt water, you just pour it in, trying your best not to splash the stuff everywhere. And the anti-glug containers I'm using will help with that, and they are the single greatest invention of all time. Now you can mix salt water yourself at home, but you mustn't use tap water because it contains contaminants that are harmful to corals and that will lead to algae outbreaks. Which means you would need to buy a special filter called an RODI filter that strips all of the impurities out of your tap water. They're a really good upgrade later down the line, but buying pre-mixed salt water takes away all of that hassle and so for now we're keeping it simple. Once the salt water is in, you'll need to add a heater, which is the only piece of equipment that doesn't come with this tank. A 50 watt heater will do just fine, and I'm using this Fluval E-Series heater, which is set to 25 degrees C or 77 Fahrenheit. And then you can add the included pump, which will circulate the water through your filtration section. The cable for the pump is pretty short, so you'll either need a socket close to the tank or a short extension cable. And it's worth turning the pump on straight away so your heater can bring your tank up to temperature. And next up, I'm going to add the sand. Now you can add sand first, it just means you need to be a bit more careful when you're pouring the water in. So on this occasion, I've chosen to add sand second. You'll want to rinse the sand off first to keep any fine dust particles out of your tank. And that just means running it under a tap for 10 minutes until the water runs clear. I'm using two kilos of fine grain sand because it looks nice and it is slightly easier to keep clean and more coarse sand. But the grain size is largely just personal preference, so use whatever marine specific sand you want. Now I wouldn't recommend you use non-marine specific sand, but if you do, make sure you do a bit of research to check that it won't leach anything into your tank. And now we're ready to set up the filtration, which on this tank is about as simple as it gets. The tank comes with a sponge filter, a bag of activated carbon, 
and some porous ceramic media that will host your friendly bacteria. Because activated carbon only removes discoloration from the water, I'm going to put it to one side for now. New salt water is about as crystal clear as it gets, so I won't need the activated carbon to clean the water until I've been feeding for a good few weeks. The ceramic media needs a gentle rinse before it goes in the tank, and the little baggie fits nicely in the sponge filter, which will mean all the water will pass through the ceramic media. And here's a quick shot of the filter section to show you how it works. The water comes in on the right at the top, then passes into the middle section where your sponge and ceramic media will be. It then exits at the bottom, goes into the pump and back out into your tank. It's a really simple setup and that is all you need to do with filtration for this tank. There is an optional skimmer and there are various other filtration options for this tank, but they're not necessary so I'll cover those off in a future video when I tell you what upgrades and accessories I recommend if you want to take this tank to the next level. In terms of illumination, the Evo comes with a built-in light that sits in a groove in the lid. Now while the light is totally adequate for the simple fish and corals that will go in this tank, I'm sure Fluval won't hate me for describing it as basic. The controllability is limited to either on or off, and you can choose whether the light is blue or white. I'd recommend white 90% of the time, and just to switch to blues occasionally when you want to show off the fluorescence of your corals when you eventually add them. And you'll need a plug timer for the light to make sure you don't forget to turn it off at the end of the day. Now Mike, if you were waiting for me to get to the complicated part, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you. The tank is now completely set up and ready for you to simply add some bottled bacteria and then your first fish. I'll do that in a separate video so I can properly talk you through all of the fish options on this tank and show you the easy process of adding the necessary bacteria. But there really is nothing else you need. The upgrades I mentioned I'll be adding are firmly in the want not need category, so this really is the finished article. And the full cost of everything I've shown you to get the tank to this stage is around £110 on top of the cost of the tank, so that is a grand total of £250. Although that's on the basis that you spent £50 on rock like a normal person and not the £100 bespoke aquascape I went for. Now Mike doesn't know I'm making this video but he will watch it, so please use the comment section below to apply some gentle encouragement or full on peer pressure, whichever you think is best. And if you've got any questions yourself, let me know those too. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for the next episode. And until next time, happy reefing.